Thank you, Andy. The space between the sublime and the ridiculous is where I'm most at home. But uh, I'm going to say a couple of words about that. I'm going to take the, take the opportunity to share something that sprang from this jam. And it is, it's not a ukulele piece per se, but uh, for once I'd like to encourage you all to noodle quietly um, as I'm speaking because I think it's contextual to, to what I'm doing here. And uh, this is something I put up on my blog, davidnewland.com, a couple of weeks ago, inspired by yet another one of those great nights that we continue to have here. Uh, and I, I wanted to try to put into words something that I've occasionally fumbled to try and say in the jam space. And so uh, if you'll indulge me, I'll, I'll just read this. And um, as I said, you can feel free to noodle and think of it as sort of dandling the baby um, as we go along. Uh, it's a bit of a sermon, if you will, uh, which perhaps is not totally out of context because I think we sometimes ap approach something uh, that's above and beyond the mundane in this space. Any ukulele player will tell you that the instrument is uniquely addictive. I play a bunch of instruments, but the uke is the only one I actually crave playing. The feeling of playing a uke approaches pure affection not something we usually feel for inanimate objects, which simply suggests that the instrument the Hawaiians know and love as the jumping flea is alive. Ukulele playing is not a mere hobby or a time waster. For me, at least, it's a practice akin to meditation that becomes a daily act of devotion, as silly as that sounds. And as such, it's one of those little things that has grand consequences. Consider this, to admit that one is a ukulele player is to deepen one's sense of self-worth. At the Corktown Uke Jam, we've talked about coming out as a uke player, only partly in jest. On the other side of the admission of obsession with a silly instrument is a whole new level of ease of being. Then there's the transcendence of sexual symbolism. Our societies become so focused on rockers with mighty phallic guitars. There's inevitably some snickering when someone starts proudly parading a pretty little instrument. But one of the best things about the uke is that it's actually an instrument without sexual connotations. It's not so much a lover as a child. A uke doesn't need to be seduced. It just wants some attention <laughs> and that pure affection that I talked about. And it's oh so easy to give. Give a little affection and you get something in return. If you spend a half an hour snuggling a baby or petting a puppy, you're changing your body chemistry for the better. There's no doubt in my mind that the uke has similar happy effects, which is why when we're playing, we tend to be a ridiculously cheerful lot. <laughs> we're high on playing uke. But there's more going on when you sit back and strum than mere chemistry. When attention, affection, intention, and expression all come together in one place, something transcendent happens. The moment begins to deepen. Possibilities present themselves. Identity is sublimated to activity. This is when we begin to sense divinity. I'm comfortable saying that playing the uke can be a form of prayer. We spend so much time worrying about big stuff, our jobs, our assets, our place in society, the environment, the economy, the fate of the world. Try as we might, we seldom find peace with the big stuff, except when we're busy with the little things. Religious believers use mighty metaphors, fantastic frameworks, complex cosmologies to help put big stuff into perspective. I respect that, but I humbly submit that practice, not profundity, is the most important part of any faith. If we are to be saved, it will be by our daily devotion to the little things. Regardless of your worldview, I think you're as likely to glimpse divinity by transplanting tulips, doodling on napkins, or noodling on ukes, as by chanting mantras or rubbing rosaries. You pray your way. I'll play my uke. My flea has gods, or in the language of the internet, my fleas has God. 